everybody! Welcome to another episode of Magic the Amateuring. What? You're thinking, how could this possibly be the intro? You've never begun a show with just a normal intro no. in the entirety of the podcast. But here we are. All 218 episodes have ridiculous intros. That's right. But this one, I just said the name of the wow. show at the top of it. Megan, are you feeling okay? I don't know, man. I feel like a little, I feel a little weird. I feel a little out of it. I know. Maybe I'm living in an alternate reality right now. Maybe this is a pair universe. How would I know? We wouldn't know. Oh, there if has to you be. Just, you know, no, wait. If we all, if we suddenly parallel switched, shwoomp, yeah. then I think we would know that something was off. Would we? How would you know? Because it would be a big enough thing, unless all the, unless it's like the theory where every time you make a decision, you it create like, a new parallel universe. Yeah. Then you wouldn't know because it'd be so small. Yeah. Wow. Huh. I don't know how to answer this question, Megan. I feel really weird. I feel like there should be a test. You know, like asking your, you know, you and your identical twin some questions so they know which one of you is evil. Yeah, or like looking in a mirror and shouting. <laughs> and if, <laughs> um, <laughs> what know. if that was how you you skipped dimensions? <laughs> you look in the mirror and just you look shout. in the mirror and you shout at it. Yeah, you shout at your mm-hmm, reflection. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sounds reasonable. That's why the Bloody Mary game worked as a child. <laughs> What we were actually doing was traveling through dimensions. Wait, you actually had that game work? Yeah. You mean it did more than make kids scream? (laughs) Well, that happened. But what happened is we were not actually summoning someone. We were actually just switching dimensions. Oh, interesting. You know what the funniest thing about all this is? What? We started off normal and now Now we're we're straight weird. Good, good. Solve that problem. That fulfills the promise of our oh, show. <laughs> we're in this. We're in the right dimension after all. Oh, we're thank in the right goodness. Universe. All right. I'm one of your hosts, Megan. I'm one of your hosts, Maria. And this is a podcast about Magic: The Gathering. On today's episode, we're going to talk all about Amon Ket. Woo! We got some preview cards uh, previewed today, and we'll continue. You know, for the next few days slash mm-hmm. weeks, and uh, we're going to talk about some of those new cards for you because Ooh. we're excited. Yeah, we are. Uh, we're also going to return to an old segment. A card of the week, yes. where we choose a card and we talk about it. That's that's that's, that's what the it segment. was. I didn't remember this segment, but a listener informed me that that was a segment, and then I yeah. remembered it after they told me. But if you had told me, I mean, if you had asked me to independently remember this, it wouldn't have happened. Do you see yeah. what I'm trying to say? I've forgotten a lot of things that we've done. I would say usually <laughs> the forgetting is for the better. That is the name of a novel, if I've ever heard one. <laughs> the forgetting is for the better? And then it's made into a Hallmark series, obviously. Oh, that's a Hallmark movie if oh, ever yes. I heard one. Yes. Somebody told me today at work, they're like, my wife is reading this book where this woman wakes up from a coma. And while she was in the coma, in some weird coma dream, she mm-hmm. was dreaming that she was in love with this guy and her life was great and happy. She wakes up to a horrible, contentious divorce and several ch- children or whatever. And I was like, nightmare scenario. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No kidding. <laughs> Sounds so stressful. What's the movie where um, the the woman pretends like she's the guy's wife when he's like in an accident or like his, his fiance or something like yeah. that? And then, but and, but then he wakes up with amnesia, but he is really engaged to somebody else. Whoa, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure I I've seen that preview. To God, this is a movie. I'm going to have to look it up. Maria, keep talking about what we're going to say okay. today. Sure. So Almond Cat's happening. Uh, we're also going to recap GP Orlando uh, really quickly because that happened this past weekend. It was a limited GP Ether Revolt. We're going to go over that. Friend of the friend of the show, by the way, was the champion of that GP. So that's pretty cool. And of course, uh, I've got some stuff to say before we get into the show like I always do. But we're not going to talk about um, funding just yet. Movie, man, accident, amnesia, engagement. <laughs> <laughs> You're definitely going to find it through that search query. <laughs> Keep talking. Sorry. Okay, before I get into the funding stuff, uh, before that, I wanted to briefly pitch you on this thing. Um, at GP Vegas coming up, it's going to be an epic, you know, three different events. GP It's going to be awesome. Basically like a magic convention. Uh, a friend of the show, again, Mike Lineman, Vorthos Mike on Twitter, who writes a lot about art, is uh, kind of throwing together a Kickstarter with a bunch of other people to set up an art gallery at GP Vegas. So you can go there, check out some original works of magic art, work your way through like 
like several sets, see some really cool art up close and personal uh, at GP Vegas. So uh, if you want to check out that Kickstarter and consider donating, there's great rewards like sweet enamel pins, enamel tokens from cardamajigs, normal tokens, uh, dinner with artists at GP Vegas. If you are a high roller, uh, you can find the link to that Kickstarter through our Twitter at MTA cast. We tweeted it out earlier this week so go check that out i'm finding some really dark lists i bet you are eight of the best movies about memory loss top five <laughs> romantic comedies about <laughs> brain damage is, is a this? list that's a dark netflix category that's what that it says really to me. is one final plug, uh, and that is on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash mtacast. You can have, head over there right now and see Megan and I's top 10 list of best commons from Modern Masters mm-hmm. 3. We, uh, we we nailed them down, Megan. We nailed them down. If you think we made any mistakes, yeah, you can tell us in the comments, but I think our list is really good and solid. And if you want to do better at Modern Masters Draft, check it out because I think um, I think there's some good strats in there for you. Yeah, dude. Did you find it? I'm still working on it. Okay, so I guess... Okay, I keep coming up... The the one that keeps coming up at the top is the vow, but that's, like, definitely not the one that I'm thinking of. Oh, gosh. I don't know. Somebody out there in listener land for sure is going to tweet at us the right answer. Yeah. Because I'm not going to get it, and it looks like the internet is going to fail you as well. Ugh, I can't believe this. But before, you can keep looking, because I want to say something about Card Kingdom, who is the sponsor of the show, as you know, as well as a lot of other great content out there on Magic the Gathering. And uh, I was recently at Card Kingdom store in Bellevue. We talked about this Mox Boarding House last week, but I've neglected to say that they have something really cool there that you can also purchase online, which is kind of these starter decks that you can get to help teach somebody how to play Magic or potentially just play with a friend or um, somebody who is not as familiar with the game as you are. And they've been specially handcrafted uh, to fit different archetypes. Like there's a beatdown deck. Um, I took a picture, so maybe I should reference that because there's a whole ton of them and they looked really cool. Like there is probably a zombie one. And... um, Oh, okay, well, now I'm going to have to go through my uh, uh, my photos. Oh, a good thing I didn't take too many photos since then. Well, what are we talking about? I can... These I can, decks uh, at Card Kingdom that I saw actually up Actually, try and sale. help you before, uh, rather than trying to... Okay, just... here they are. They are called... They're battle decks. That's what they're called, battle decks. And uh, you can buy them for pretty cheap. I, th- I think they're just like 10 bucks or something, like... Red Menace, Rebel Riot, Emerging Evil, Battle Blitz. Like, this seems like a great way to teach people how to play Magic. And like I mentioned, they've been specifically tuned to uh, have synergies and be a lot of fun to play. Crush of the Scales. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. So cardkingdom.com slash mtacast is the place to go to find those battle decks. Or you can hit up their store in Bellevue if you live there. But it's just another example of how Card Kingdom kind of goes above and beyond. Um, I, I, their shipping is amazingly fast. Their customer service While you were sleeping. is great. Oh. Yes. Well, gosh, that's just... Got a, there. That was really basic. <laughs> I was expecting it to be super obscure for some reason. No, I was literally just thinking of the film while you were oh, sleeping okay. with Sandra Bullock in it. Okay, okay. Sweet. thank you for vamping for that entire time. Good job. No worries. Now we don't all have to live with wondering what <laughs> thank what God. that film was. But already by now, five people have like tweeted at us already. Uh, yeah, exactly. Five people are like, "You're thinking of while you were sleeping." <laughs> Anyways. Anyways, carkingdom.com slash MTACast. Put it as your link, like a hot link in your browser. What's the word I'm looking for? Bookmark. And uh, just hit that and it'll give yeah. it and it'll show them that you appreciate our show whenever you go and visit their site. And of course, you are also to thank before we get too far. That's right. Maria, I can thank the patrons if you want to Google something <sighs> that God. you desperately okay. need to know I'm the gonna, answer I'm to just for a Google minute. Something right but you now. need to come back to us with, with a the fact. Answer. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you so much to everybody mm. who supports the podcast on uh, on Patreon. It means the world to us um, and it it keeps the show the show running and allows us to come up with different new ideas for content, uh, to go out into the magic world and come back with things to talk to you all about uh rather rather than just you know uh making stuff up off the top of our heads 
which is what I'm doing right now while Maria Googles something on her phone. I am running out of stuff to say, but I'll tell you about some of the sweet rewards that you can get for being a patron. Uh, uh, you can join our Discord chat uh, at any level of being a patron. We have a special patron-only Discord chat. Uh, we also have sweet stickers. We have these amazing fridge magnets uh, that are uh, magic-related magnetic poetry. And, of course, we have amazing playmats as well. So thank you so much to everyone who is already a patron. And if you're able, as little as a dollar of an episode, join our Patreon family uh, and help keep the show alive and well. There was a fun moment in our Discord chat today uh-huh. or yesterday, I can't remember, where somebody posted a screen capture of us from YouTube, and they're like, everybody captioned this. And it was, I don't know, it was just kind of cute and fun. Aww. Anyway, what I looked up, I should not, never have done, because I googled, what bug has the most legs? And I don't... Oh, I don't want to know. I don't know, ah! I, I don't know why I did that to myself, no, because now no. I'm horrified. Oh, God. How many, how many legs do you think it has? A, um, a million. <laughs> Fine, a thousand. What's your real guess? A thousand. 750 legs. 750 legs. <laughs> it is so gross. No, no. I can't even say what its name. I don't even know if it has a non-scientific name. Let's not talk about it anymore. Oh, my God. I'm going to throw up. That was disgusting. I'm sorry, everybody. Don't Google that unless you want night terrors. <laughs> Almond Cat Tree. Or should I say Almond Cat? That's right. There are some sick cards coming out of Nicole Bolas's plane, uh, oh the Egyptian-themed uh, realm where he rules. Walk like an Egyptian. I am nearly certain that that is not how that song goes. <laughs> I can't swear to it, but I'm like pretty close. I'm pretty to sure that a lot of people sing it at karaoke, and there's definitely the do 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 part in there. Are you? I'm okay. not being no. serious. Okay, I just wanted. Okay. <laughs> so there's a sweet. Uh, there's a couple of sweet new mechanics that yes. we're seeing. Yes. Let's talk about some of those. So there yeah. was a card that was kind of spoiled before its time. Yes. Let's just say. Um, that is a really weird looking split card. Yes. Unlike uh, Dusk a- Dawn. So the way that these cards are read, so there's cards in the past that have been split like fire and ice or whatever, yes. is two. So this card will be read as Dusk to Dawn. And uh, it's got one half of the card that's sitting up straight like a normal half and like a normal card and one half that's kind of like 90 degrees. Brink. Yep. That looks like a totally weird card. What the heck is this, Megan? Uh, so the way that these work is that um, when you cast this card from your hand, you're casting the top part. Okay. That looks like the top half of a normal, like normally formatted card. In this case, dusk, dusk is the part that you can cast from your hand to white, white sorcery, destroy all creatures with power greater or equal to three. What a jerk card. What a great card. <laughs> then you can cast the other half of your of the card only from the graveyard. So it has to already be in the graveyard, uh, and you can't cast the top half of this card again. You can only cast that bottom half, again, from your graveyard. Uh, aftermath, cast a spell only from your graveyard, then exile it. Return all creature cards with power less than or equal to two from your graveyard to your hand. Okay. So it's uh, it's pretty sweet. It's You get to cast basically... Uh, it's basically two cards, yeah. Except it has two different effects. So you get to cast one while well, the first time that you cast that you have it, and then you get to cast the other half the second time. I must say it looks really bizarre um, yes. to look at. It. it looks like it looks fake. It looks yeah. like two cards were glued together, and like one was miniaturized and then glued yeah. in the bottom. But as people have said, this is cool because if you you know you have your graveyard in a row, yeah, you can turn this at ninety degrees, and then so you'll that know part of that the spell it's... sticks oh. out, so you know that it's in your graveyard and you can cast it and you can easily read that text right there that's that's poking out. I will say too though that this is be this a note of warning. I don't want to see people exiling their cards in their graveyard by turning them sideways anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I um, want a different Usually zone. you should be making a pile anyway. Yes, a like separate pile. You can't pile. just turn it sideways and say like this is exiled and it's in the rest of the stack. You have to put it someplace so, else. So like maybe this will get rid of that bad habit because I've seen people yeah. do that and it kind of bugs me because I'm like what if you hit it or whatever yeah. when you're putting other stuff in there. Anyway, and this is also relevant. Like you're like okay, say I don't even want to cast cask cast dusk yeah. um there is cycling cycling has returned 
to yeah. this um, set as well, which is another way that we're uh, using the graveyard in this set. Not necessarily discarding this, but um, yeah, the graveyard cycling, is... You usually have to discard, discard the, the card, card that itself. has cycling. Um, getting things back from the graveyard, recursion is uh, the magic word that we use, is a really active thing in Amonkhet, which makes sense because yeah, it's absolutely. all about the afterlife. So uh, in this case, like Dusk, it might be that you cast Dawn to clear all of your opponent's creatures, but you've been loading up your graveyard creatures via cycling, and then you cast, uh, or Dawn, and then you cast Dusk, and then all of the, all of the ones in your graveyard come back. Yeah. Uh, pretty sick. Uh, Maria, what about Embalm? Embalm. Okay, so this is a bizarre new mechanic that yeah. I rather enjoy. Ooh. Um, it's very designy, so this yes. set seems really design heavy. Um, yes. Um, so what happens with Embalm? Let's take a look at this little fellow here. True Heart Duelist, which is yeah. one in a white for a 2-2. And I so love this art. It's, it's just a bear. Very cool. Just your average bear. So, um, well, but it, this is more than an average bear. <laughs> this is a bear that uh, can block an additional creature each, each combat. Right. So the thing is, it wants to die. <laughs> it's basically what that tells me. <laughs> and uh, they want to die. I'm which a is true heart duelist. Very flavorful in Amonkhet, by the way. Yes. Um, so it goes to the graveyard. It has embalm for two and a white. So what that says is exile true heart duelist from your graveyard. So it can only be activated when it's in your graveyard. Mm -hmm. Then put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of true heart duelist except it's a zombie in addition to its other types yeah that's right and also like it's in this case it's a white zombie yes like, usually you've only seen zombies in black here zombie co zombies come in white yeah and each thing that has embalm in the set comes with its own embalmed token isn't that awesome i love that also look at the art on this embalmed token it's creepy af <laughs> so basically it just comes back as its old self except that you're not going to be able to just embalm it forever yeah um, and, it's a, it. and it's a zombie now zombie which may or may not be relevant we'll find out so, and it's a and it's a token so, yeah, and it's a token. Um, we also have uh, old friend Gravedigger. Gravedigger's back. Obviously coming back, being like, "Hey, come on, come on out of the, come on out of the graveyard, friends." Yeah, Gravedigger is just an example of a super value card because you're getting a two-two body for four, but you're also getting anything that you, any of your creatures you want back from the graveyard to your hand. So, Gravedigger yeah. hashtag value. We've also seen um, exert. Yes. Which is uh, something that some creatures have, which uh, when you declare it as an attacker, you can only, only at that point, only at the very beginning of attacks, when you're declaring as an attacker, you can choose to exert it if it has exert. And then it means it's giving like some sort of extra bonus, some sort of extra effort, but then it doesn't untap during its next. Because it'd be tired. During, yeah. It's like, oh, I tried so hard. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I tried so hard, not tired for turn. so much work. Ah, uh, sleepy. Uh, like, Glorybringer is the first card that we've seen with this mechanic. Three red red for a dragon. It's a 4-4 dragon with flying and haste. My oh my. Okay. Uh, you may exert Glorybringer as it attacks. When you do, it deals four damage to target non-dragon creature and opponent controls. That's insane. That's crazy. <laughs> Sorry, this yeah. card is so no. good. For five mana, you just slam it, attack with it, and kill something? Like... That's sick. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, is this too good? Because <laughs> that seems so good. I mean, it's five mana. O to the P. Okay. Like in five limited. Five mana. That's not, a, that's not a lot. I mean, in in like standard. In standard. Who, who cares? Yeah. But like in limited, in limited. this card is going to be bonkers. And it's just a rare. Yeah. At least I think that's it is. just a rare. Yeah. I mean, prepare, prepare to be glory brought. <laughs> Oh, I'll be bringing as much glory as humanly poss yeah. in this uh, draft then, format. As Maria mentioned, uh, cycling is back. Yes. So cards that have cycling on them will say it, uh, like this arch Archfiend of Inf Ifnir, uh, three black black for a five four flyer demon. Uh, it has some other text, but it says cycling two. That means that you can pay two mana, discard it, and draw a card. Right. And cycling's great. A lot of people are very happy about it because it helps smooth out your draws and mm -hmm. get, get you the mana you need on time. And, of course, enable some graveyard shenanigans, like with Gravedigger, for example, um, yeah. in this set. And it's also great, I think, because it provides like a lot of decision points for yes. people because you have to decide if you had like this in your hand, maybe you're stuck on three for a long time, but, and then you have to start making decisions. Like, do I want to cycle away this really great card that I have? And hopefully I'll be able to get it back from my graveyard. Do I want to hold on to it and not cycle it? Uh, I, yeah. 
I, I like that it provides places for people to stop and be like, well, I have to make a decision. It's a pretty important one. Right. It's the same as I would say with Morph. That gave you some options to play creatures early oh. uh, if you needed to. And, and then I loved Morph. flip them later. And Morph was fantastic. So was I'm, I'm excited to play with cycling. Me too. Megan, pick one of these cards that's been previewed and tell me why it excites you personally on a personal, deep personal level. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is a good this is a good question. Um I'm going to pick 6 cents. Okay. Even though I know that this is like <laughs> it's an enchantment that goes on a creature so and it's in green so I feel like you can't claim it just cuz it looks like a Boggles card. It is a Boggles card. But it's also a drawing a card <laughs> card. And I yes. love drawing yeah, cards. Uh, for a single green it's this enchant creature enchanted creature has whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player you may draw a card. Yeah. I Pretty mean sick. question. Are you playing this? Am I playing this? I mean, yes. Okay. I would put the... Depends. I mean, it super depends, but I would... It says draw a card on it. It so. sure does. Like, and it, it really only costs one. Card. So, like, the cost of this card, including it, is is fairly low. Like, it's just it's just one mana. Mm-hmm. Uh, it gives you a pretty good effect if you're able to stick it, if your opponent is removal light. Yeah. Uh, but you are leaving yourself open to a two-for-one. So, maybe there'll be a hexproof creature in the set, Megan. What do you think about that? Ooh. Putting this on a hexproof creature? I'd do that all day. Yeah. So this is an update uh, from me- what Megan insinuated to Keen Sense, uh, which is played in Boggle Sex. I don't currently run it because I don't think it does enough. But um, but yeah, I would agree. But it is it is kind of a step backwards in that you can put it on your oppo- opponent's creature if you need to, and it still does what it's what it says it does, which is not what Keen Sense does. Also, so, Keen Sense is damage to a player. Yes, correct. Yeah. So you could put it on something with ping effects, whereas this is only combat damage. So another card that I think is kind of cool that's back from a blast from the past is Fling. Oh yeah. Which is one in a red for an instant as an additional cast cost to cast Fling, sacrifice a creature. Fling deals damage equal to the sacrifice creature's power to target creature or player. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. Nice. So you can just take one of your big dudes and just like throw them at somebody's yeah. face. Yep. Or throw them at another creature, which is just a fantastic visual. Yes. <laughs> Imagine if you did this with, like, that 5-4 demon. You're just taking a demon Whing! and throwing it. You're like, you get in, you got in for a couple hits. Now I'm just going to throw yep, this exactly. at your face. I'm just going to take them and grab this demon and chuck it at you. Yeah. Never flinch. Never falter. Never fear. I thought that flavor text should be... Four! <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> do you... I think you know how to play the game of golf. I do. You know that you don't throw golf balls, right? I some you know, Megan, if nobody on your team is looking and you need to really not hit it very far because my arms are weak. <laughs> I was trying to think of any reason you would want to throw a golf ball rather like, than hit it. You need to throw a, a golf ball less far something. than you can hit it. <laughs> throw it. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Angler Drake, which is four blue blue yes. for a 4-4 four, four flyer. And when oh, it enters beautiful. the battlefield, you may return target creature to its owner's hand. I mean, pretty good. Pretty good. That card's pretty four, good. 4-4 four flyer. Megan. Bounce yeah. party. And it's an uncommon. That's not even a rare. Bounce party. <laughs> bounce bounce party. party. Yeah. So we've got some old friends returning. Mighty Leap uh, comes yeah. back. Impeccable timing. I like the timing. art on Mighty Leap. Oh, art on Mighty Leap is fantastic. Uh, yeah, impeccable tighting. We're not we're timing. we're not going to be able to call it a Johnny's three damage anymore <laughs> because that is not a Johnny that's dealing right, three damage in that art. Oh, R.I.P. a Johnny's three damage. <laughs> You were a terribly named card that we said at once. Yep. So, Maria, something else big has been started to be previewed today. Yeah. And that is the Masterpiece series for Amonkhet. So a lot of people are look forward to these with bated breath because they're an awesome new addition that I believe Wizards has included in their new sets and a way for people to get access to older cards, Mm -hmm. drive down prices, Mm -hmm. um, and give you something really exciting uh, and value in your pack if you open one. This time around, they are invocations. 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 And they're not standard legal, but if you open one in a limited event, you may play it. Mm -hmm. So... You know, here's my problem. I'm just looking at these. I can't read them. I can't read them. I agree with I that. I don't know what they say. <laughs> it, like, it really <laughs> takes a minute. And you know what? Okay, I'll, do you know, I'll, I will tell you something, though. What? Like, there's part of me that kind of loves that. Because it's like hieroglyphics? I kind of love that I look at the font and it doesn't look like regular typeface. 
I can't, I I'm le- I legitimately don't know what these cards are, f- and the laptop is not that far away. Yeah. I so mean, I, I think that's that. a problem. But um, I mean, I guess I'm I'm wondering. It's the same as like right like in my. I own, like, an Italian scape shift. Okay. Because it was, like, I traded it at some point, and I was just like, yeah, do you know what? I know what scape shift does. And if it ever comes to a point in a tournament where my opponent does not know what scape shift does, I can tell them what it does. Or we can also always, like, call a judge if they don't want to believe me when I cast this <coughs> Italian scape shift. Yeah. I don't know why However, I would lie to them I about what scape shift is doing. I but... don't know what it looks like. I don't know. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, once you're familiar with this, if you're putting it in your deck, you're going to know what it is. Right? Like, when you look at a card in your hand, do you look at the title or do you look at the art? Like, art. You look at the whole thing, right? So if you look at this, like, if this is in your deck, you're going to know what it does. Yes. And when you cast it, you can, you like, you're going to say it. Yeah. I don't know. I think, ugh, man. I know that a lot of people are hating on these. Yeah. And part of me is like, okay, do you know what? I get it. Like, like what you're going to like, don't like what you're not going to like. But there's part of me that's, like, kind of excited to see one of these in person because I don't know that my mind is completely made up to hate them yet. No, I'm not saying that I hate them. i just saying that I maybe I want to read it. Yeah. But... No, nah, reading it is overrated. <laughs> I do... I did say that I like the border a lot. Um, I do. I really like the side borders. The side borders. really good. And I love gold, you know. Yeah. I love gold. So... I'm down for as much gold as you want to put on a card. Put it on there. Yeah. Um, you know, I am just. I. I really. I'm. In, I'm excited to see one in person. So what? What's what's what? What do we actually have here? Uh, so these are called invocations. Right. Um. And so far we have. There's a see, cryptic, cryptic command. Cryptic command. Oh yeah. Oh, that'll. Well, you play. Yeah, that. I play cryptic commands. Uh, there's a chain lightning. There's Avon Mind Sensor, Pact of Negation, Wrath of God. Wow. Destroy all creatures that can't be regenerated. Pretty sweet. Uh, Counterbalance, uh, Counterspell. Let's see, Avon Mind Sensor and Maelstrom Pulse. Which one is this one? Which one is that one? That's Oh, Consecrated Sphinx. Oh, and that's Consecrated Sphinx, yes. And this one is, oh, that's Maelstrom Pulse. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So, yeah. A lot of countery things going on in these masterpieces. Yeah. And also kind of like, uh, you know, like, obviously very powerful effects. Like, I get it. Like, they kind of seem like they could be related to the different gods of Amonkhet. Yes, and we do know the names of some of those gods now. We do? Yes, we know because what? I tweeted out this picture of a cat that mm-hmm. was previewed. However, it's only in the Planeswalker deck. Which is too bad because it has a tiny beard Very and it's sad. great. It was a 2-2 two, two that got plus one, plus one when it attacked. Oh. And um, in the flavor text mentioned Oketra as the god. Ooh. So that is the cat god's name. <gasps> Oketra. Oketra. Nice. Which is a great name for a cat god. Also, that cat's beard. Let's talk about it again. Okay, sure. That cat had a tiny cat beard. Did you see it? <laughs> I did. It was great. It was so small. It was so tiny. It's a <laughs> tiny cat beard on a tiny cat chin. My h- fingers are crossed for a cat deck in Amonkhet. Oh. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, we've, you know, Sahili cat, cat you could say that, like, that's a cat deck. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's a combo deck yeah. with one cat. No, I Hope want cat BS. deck tribal. Yeah. Zombie cats. Zombie cats. Black cat was a zombie cat. Yeah, it was. It could happen. Ah, oh, beard cats. If this is what I want, yeah, I want a cat with embalm. Mm, that will probably happen. You think it will? They did that, right? That was a thing. Yeah, they definitely did embalm their you cats. Can't, you don't want to. You don't want to just like not. You don't want to be without your pets in the afterlife. No, that was that would be sad. That would be sad. So yeah, and I want to bring back a little zombie cat with a zombie cat token. Oh. Little zombie cat. Wouldn't it be so cute? A little zombie cat with a little zombie cat beard. Yeah. So cute. Uh, so last week we talked about activated abilities and we had a couple of clarifications that we didn't mention at the time. Uh, so we're going to touch base on that lightly before we move on. Uh, the first is that when we mentioned um, activated abilities that go on the stack that doesn't include mana abilities. Right. So something like um, Lanoir Elves is a mana ability because it generates mana. However, something like Windsept Heath, even though it's a land and you're cracking it, that's not a mana ability. Because you're not, not producing, producing mana. Yeah. Uh, so 
mana abilities do not go on uh, the stack. And you'll notice that there is some stuff like Pithing Needle, I believe, that says you can't name mana abilities. Correct. Basically. Or like you could, but you it won't do anything. Like you can't you can't stop mana abilities. Right. There are some that you can, like uh Linvala Keeper of Silence, I think is the older one. The the two white white angel. I don't remember. Um I mean it's it's hold on, it's in Linvala is someone or other. Yeah, Linvala Keep, Keeper of Silence stops all abilities. That okay. includes mana abilities uh, of stuff your opponents control. And planeswalker abilities, those are activated, yo. Yeah. So they go on the stack. Um, that was like very relevant. Do you remember back in the days of Dragon Sarkin? Yes. Um, who be like, who be turning into who, a dragon? <laughs> who became a dragon? Oh, who okay. be turning it? Yeah, I was gonna say who became a dragon, but who be turning into a dragon also works. Um, uh, so that dragon was indestructible. He became a five-five indestructible dragon. But, for instance, um, if you wanted to, you know, deal four damage via a four damage, uh, like, this doesn't... I'm trying to think of the card that was relevant then. Um, But basically, at some point, like, you could kill him with that ability on the stack. So your opponent would, like, play him, plus him to become a dragon, and with that ability on the stack, you could still kill Sarkin. Same story with, like... Gideon becoming a 5-5. Five, five. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So when they go to be like, I'm going to plus my Gideon, um, that plus goes on the stack, the indestructible, like the, all of that stuff. So you could still, if you had something like a lightning bolt and it was at three, you could bolt the Gideon and it would die before it got to do its thing. Nice to know. Yeah. Uh, last weekend was GP Orlando. Notable congratulations to a friend of the show, Yo Larson, uh, who took home the trophy, and to Chris Pakula, who is going to be back on uh, the Pro Tour. Yes! So if you have not yet seen uh, the super awesome documentary, Enter the Battlefield, uh, by... Friend of the show. By friend of the show, Nate Holt, uh, creator of Walking the Plains. Uh, it's super cool, and it talks a lot about uh, Chris Pakula's journey to become eligible for the Hall of Fame ballot again, um, because the year that he was eligible, he just barely missed out. Right. Um, and then after that, like the, the qualifications changed. So he's been trying to reach those qualifications again for a while. Did that with uh, GP Atlanta yes. last year, um, but now is also going back to the Pro Tour. Which is pretty cool. You know what's cool is that I think at in the future we're going to be able to say friend of the show whenever we say any anybody from anybody's <laughs> someday name. we want to make everybody <laughs> our literal friend. Yes, we, we do. We want everyone Accurate. to be our friend. Uh, Slowly but surely, Megan. All of you will be our friends. Let's take a quick look at Joel's uh, winning deck from the yes. top eight draft. Featuring Gear Seeker Serpent. Such a good card still. Still good. Yeah. St- uh, Gear Seeker Serpent, still a good card. Uh, Battle at the Bridge. Wow. Really good. And nice. two Daring Demolition. This seems sweet. So this is a blue-black sort of uh, control-y mm-hmm. uh, based deck. It's just blue-black good stuff, honestly. It just it does have a lot of good cards. Bastion two Sky Ship Plunderer. Oh my gosh. And it's he's not like, even making use of this, really. Yeah. Just, uh, just mostly just like getting in there with a 2-1 flyer for two, which is pretty good. This deck is cool. Yeah. Two Metallic Rebuke, notably. Oh, very interesting. I remember when people were not playing this card and people were like, ah, do you think that card's not good? And it's and like... Sometimes it says one blue mana counter Counter spell. spell. Yes, and I mean, he can make use of it in this deck because he's got cards like he's got a Foundry Inspector, he's got mm-hmm. a Pillar Bug. Is that pillar it? Pillar Bug. Oh, no, a Cogwork Assembler, uh, Augmenting Automaton. Yeah, yeah. okay. Absolutely, and Sweet. some ways like Malthus Squad to make uh, tokens. Chris Pakula drafted a red-green deck yeah. featuring, this was like the running joke of the weekend, was that how much he loved Precise Strike. <laughs> Which is like... I mean, it got him to the top eight. Like, if it gets you there, I don't know how much fun people can make of it. Because he said, like, one time that it was a fine card, but now it's totally blown out of proportion. Yeah. Uh, but it was in his top eight deck, and he did main deck it. So, one piss tri psych. Hey, I played that card. It's, it's good. all right. I like it. I like a good combat trick. I agree. And it's so Ooh, cheap. It's, he's got a Kari Zev. Oh, Kari Zev. And a Free Jam Free region. Jam region was his pack one pick one. Oof. Um Followed up, or was it? Pack no, one? I think it was pack two. Or what did he get past Kari Zev? Something he got, 
fed one of one or two of these cards, which yeah. I think uh it just paid off for him because he mm-hmm. really cut red hard and he was kind of wavering between green and blue. Mm-hmm. Um, but then he got past a lot of good re- green. Like he's got two Pima Outriders. He got a thriving Still Rhino. Still a great card, Pima Outrider. Still great. Two self-assemblers. Yeah. Still great. Oh, man. It's so hard to get two, car- two of those cards these days. I know it is because people are like, just kidding. That card's yeah. better than it looks. It's just so weird to think about Kaladesh because I've been so immersed in Modern Masters. I know. Like, so, so deep in it. But these cards still exist. Alexander Hain was also um, uh, amongst the top eight players Mm -hmm. in this GP. So congrats to y'all. Good job, buddy. Uh, Community Cup teammate. That's right. Master of great hair and leather jackets. (laughs) And an accent. And, And in this case, Ether Revolt. Yep. Flavor Text Theater presents Mad, Mad Libs. Libs. All right, we've got a couple here. Uh, so, Maria, I'll start out. Uh, okay. I need a noun. All right. Um, fisherman. Uh, I need another noun. Um, goat beards. Another or goat na- beard. Another noun. Uh, pickle patch. <laughs> <laughs> An adjective. Um, super crusty. And another noun. Um, uh, baby. (laughs) All right. (laughs) I, okay, here's the original of Vampire Aristocrat. I admit, I am a creature of the city. The sights, the nightly excitement, the abundance of fine drink. Uh, here's the next. I admit, I am a fisherman of the goat beard. The pickle patch. The nightly excitement, the abundance of super crusty baby. <laughs> the abundance of super crusty baby. All right. Your turn. How your horrifying. Turn. Okay. <clears throat> I need a group, uh, you know, some kind of group or organization. Um, oh, uh, the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> uh, noun, please. Um, group on. <laughs> I don't. Okay. Uh, another noun. I need a lot of them. Um, sunflower. Okay. Uh, and a noun. Gross toes. Oh, nice, nice. And a verb ending in ing. Um. Uh, frolicking. Frolicking. Okay, and a noun. Um. T- tuberculosis. Okay. <laughs> the original is a. Uh, a foil, by the way, these are all going Ooh. in our Patreon drawing. Yeah. Foil Celestia Signet, which cube alert, okay. Um, the symbol of the conclave is one of unity with tree supporting sun and sun feeding tree. Ooh. But your version is the symbol of the Backstreet Boys <laughs> is one of Groupon with sunflower <laughs> supporting gross toes and gross toes frolicking tuberculosis. <laughs> <laughs> makes total sense. Yep, yep that makes Perfect sense. Yep. All right. Uh, I need a noun. Um, cream. I need a verb past tense. Oh, no, oh, sucked. <laughs> I'm sorry. It just came out. I it's just. <laughs> Don't laugh at it already. I'm not gonna be able to say it. <laughs> I need a verb. Okay. Um, <laughs> pluck. <laughs> I need a person. Uh, 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 um, 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 uh, 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 describing, describing word. Um, <laughs> uh, 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 mm, you need to stop thinking about the song. Moist, moist. There, I went for it. <laughs> Pick a different one. Why? Because. But I wanted to make a work of art, Megan. Oh, Maria, I can't read this. <laughs> 
<laughs> I want you to try. Like, I can't. I can't. Now I'm just really excited. I won't be able to unread it. <laughs> I understand. Purpose protector. Okay. Here's the original. Guilds be damned. We can fend for ourselves. Attributed to Venick of the Gateless. Okay. Okay. I'm so excited. Cream be sucked. <laughs> we, we can pluck for ourselves. Attributed to Yo Larson the Moist. <laughs> you wrote that. You wrote that. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> All right, Megan. I need yep. a, I need a famous person. Um, um. Uh, oh my God. Why can I not? Yeah, it's hard, um, isn't it? Alec Baldwin. Oh my God. Um. All right, Alec Baldwin, and I need a plural noun. Um. B- fat birds. <laughs> I need a verb. Um. <laughs> uh. J- jazz scattered. Uh. Uh. uh or jazz scat. This just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> okay, and a verb. Um. The, the Duchess of Cornwall. Verb! Oh, a verb, sorry. <laughs> do you want to, do you want to verb that? <laughs> Duchess of Cornwalling. Okay. It's not, I can't ing it though, but I'll put, I'll just put it in there. Oh, okay. That's very, we'll see if it works. Very flexible of you. So here's our rare okay. that a patron will be receiving. Ooh. It is Niv Mizzet, Draco Genius. Oh, he's great. Which is, uh, draw cards, man. He is Draco genius and he's a commander as well for a lot of people um he has no patience for minds that do not inspire him or explode by trying it's pretty intense yeah um alec baldwin has no patience for fat birds (laughs) (laughs) that do not jazz scat him or duchess of corn what did you say cromwell the cornwell duchess of cornwall him try (laughs) I just really love Alec Baldwin has no patience for fat birds. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've heard. Somebody please what I've heard. draw that for us. Thank Alec you. Baldwin has no patience for fat birds. <laughs> that's the rumor anyway. All right. Uh, let's see. I need a, a a human characteristic or a human trait. Oh, um, like being nosy. Uh, no, I mean, like, I guess like a quality, like a physical quality. Oh, okay. So like an adjective, I guess, ish. Adjective for a human. Mm-hmm. Um... Buttery, buttery. I'll take butter. <laughs> uh, noun. Um, finger licking good. That's an adjective that I want. If there's another one in there. Oh, the, okay, I'll. I don't have a space for another adjective, but. Dang it! All right, a KFC. Oh uh, wait, hold on. I'll take. I'll take finger licking good. Okay. I got it for. I'm gonna use it for concept. Oh, that's oh, perfect. perfect. Okay, so I still need a noun. Okay, a noun. Um. Uh, or I'll take K- KFC. Very <laughs> weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a person. Um, uh, uh, Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> this seems correct now. <laughs> Good. It all worked out. Uh, Death Hood Cobra. Size alone does not guarantee survival. Vorinclex, voice of hunger. Okay. Butter alone does not guarantee KFC. <laughs> Shia LaBeouf, voice of finger... <laughs> What's a finger looking good? <laughs> butter alone. I'm going to counter that. Butter alone does ensure a KFC. Does ensure KFC. Okay, one more. Okay. Uh, I need me. an occupation. Uh, love doctor. <laughs> uh, I need a noun. Um, ch- <laughs> Chinese takeout. I need another noun. Um... Quiet, quiet mice. Uh, I need another occupation. Hell farmer. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) And another noun. Dirt. (laughs) Okay, mortician beetle. To the soldier, war is famine. To the scavenger, a feast. 
To the love doctor, Chinese takeout is quiet mice. <laughs> to the hell farmer, dirt. <laughs> Accurate. I mean, that just sounds like... It sounds yeah. Really normal. Yeah. So all of these sweet cards that we've opened um, right. are going into our giveaway for any patron mm-hmm. of any length of time at the end of the month, which is this month. Yeah. So we're going to do a drawing after this. Um, and you get some good stuff because we've opened two Modern Masters packs. So Exciting. Um, yeah. Um, if you uh, want to join up for next month, go right ahead because we'll be opening some more. We've got some more mo- Modern Masters boosters and we're probably sure to include them That's right. in some drawings coming up as well. So patreon.com slash mtacast is where to go. Show off the we're goods there, Megan. We're also giving away this sick Gisa and Garolf playmat to a new patron who signed up this month. Yeah. Thank Amazing. you so much, by the way, for everybody who's a patron. Yes. Let's do that drawing. Well, everybody, that's our show. But before we go, we've got some winnings to dole out. That's right. Thank you again so much to everyone who is a patron. Uh, we appreciate the support. Just, it cannot, it can't even, not even be said how no, much we no. appreciate it. Um, and how, uh, and how much it is necessary to creating the show that we want to create for you each week. Absolutely. Um, so our winner for this March Sick pile of cards yeah. is David Woodman from Oregon. Yay, David! Yay. So, David, as long as we've got your address and Patreon, we'll be sending these off to you. If we don't have it in there, please send us a message. And the winner of that amazing Gisa and Garolf playmat, new patron, is Jay Booth from Minnesota. Yay, Minnesota, brother! Yay. Uh, same goes if your address is already stored in Patreon, we will be sending that off to you. And if it's not, please drop us a line knowing what address we should send. It do. Remember to buy your cards from cardkingdom.com slash MTA cast. Yep. Cash I just shipping. placed a huge order today. Did you? Yeah. For the for the GP this weekend. You're going to be shocked because the cards will be here like so fast. You'll be like, oh my God. Yeah. And there'll be a cute note on it. And you'll just oh. love Card Kingdom even more than you already do. Mm, yeah. Unless and- they send me hate mail because I'm playing turns. <laughs> well, that'll just be everybody at the GP. <laughs> One or the other. But yeah, next week's episode, speaking of, is going to be about the GP. We'll cover everything that is to come from GP San Antonio. Oh, I'm so excited. We're very excited, It's going to be guys. so great. We might even have some guest footage from the GP yeah. of all of the amazing people uh, that we're going to see there. Uh, everybody that we love to call a friend of the show. Yes. Which is everybody. <laughs> so thanks so much for listening, everybody. Uh, come back next week because it's going to be one heck of an episode. And thanks again for being awesome and having ears that really know what's up. <laughs> <laughs>